Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Abundant Podcast. I'm your host, Petya Kolobová, and today's guest is pure embodiment of what wealth consciousness feels like, looks like, the possibilities, the infinite possibilities. I am so blessed and so honored to have Livia here today because the connection that we have made was such a beautiful spark of a magic and co-creation and you just meet some people and you can feel how special they are and what an impact they're making in the world so I am so thankful and so honored to have you here today and speaking about the things that really matter to us so we can awaken even more abundance and wealth into those who are listening today. Thank you so much, Patia, for having me here and thank you for this magical introduction and for <laughs> heartfelt, you know, connection. Because yet when we first connected online, it was so powerful and aligned and, you know, like a childlike innocence and beauty. And I feel like, um, you know, sometimes we don't need to be in person to actually know the other that there are some connections that transcend time and space and distance and I'm excited to have you in my life and also excited to seeing you in physical form <laughs> yes <laughs> yes it's happening it's a soon day it's not someday it's a soon day so my love before we tune into today's recording so we can serve even deeper those who are listening who are tuning in I know their I know their codes and frequencies are going to be upgraded just by listening just by having you here it's already happening automatically and we will also give their mind a little bit of evidence because sometimes we are looking for that right but before we tune in today i love starting my podcast with a little short guided meditation would you be open for that yes definitely i yeah. love that beautiful so in a chair you're sitting just find a comfort just lean back gently close your eyes Breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your mouth, just breathing naturally, connecting slowly to your breath, connecting to your heart, to the spaciousness of this present moment, feeling your body relaxing and melting. Feeling your heart expanding into the room, expanding out of the house. And just feel this expansion that keeps going, keeping you open, feeling safe, feeling held. And as you're relaxing more and more with each breath you're taking, I would love for you to visualize that you have just found the perfect land in Hawaii. You're walking around and you're feeling like all your prayers have been answered. And you say to yourself, this is what I dream of. This is what I pray for. This is what I called in. And you're feeling so much gratitude. And as you're walking on these lands with the guides who are showing you the land, they ask you, what is the most important thing to you right here and right now? What do you want this land to know from your heart to its? What would you say? What would you want this land to know? That I'm there to serve with the fullest extent of my being, pure alignment with God's source consciousness and all ancestors that had lived on that land, restoring Lemurian grids and also bringing up, activating the new earth the grids and in pure humbleness and reverence to the land and Mm. Mm, so beautiful and I know it can feel more expansive to be walking on this beautiful magical land 
I would love to have you back here with me, just slowly coming back. How you're feeling? Oh, I feel so good. <laughs> for, for like mm, connecting me with this future timeline because you know um, I felt like I didn't have uh, the physical time to to go and look for it. But one once we are doing this in the quantum field, it's coming even closer mm -hmm. to in physical form. So thank you for guiding me towards. <laughs> I had like during the meditation I could. I could actually see the land and I could see like 360 degrees, how it looks like, feels like, and you know, the, the view as well. So I know that once I will start actually looking for it, oh. and see, I will, I will, I will know when I will be there, I will know because I'll remember this. So thank you for being part of this co-creation. Oh, I just got like goosebumps, you know, all over my back. So it's so beautiful. Like how, you know, I really love that. And I feel like you are teaching that to my love that the time it's kind of just the illusion, right? Like sometimes we feel like in this three world that it has to take a lot of time and a lot of effort and we have to know the how and we have to have a strategies and you are teaching things differently. So I'm very curious for those who are listening, who are still stuck in that mode of I have to have a strategy I have to have a perfect plan I have to do things to achieve something how can we prove them wrong together <laughs> yeah so there are many people that are still stuck into the old paradigms of working hard and trying to get results because it's how we had been trained uh, to act um, in the third dimension and I feel like as we are evolving as consciousness and human being and civilization on this planet we are moving more from linear time into a quantum circular time of receiving and we are moving towards a different type of, of embodiment of consciousness but also how we are relating to our reality and how we want to see results in the world and also what is the impact that we are creating in the world so moving from the third into the fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness, there is more ease, more flow, more grace, because we realize that we are not the only one that are, are actually doing that thing. We are co-creating with the universe. We are co-creating with our spirit guide, with our higher self. And this co-creation goes beyond, you know, our physical existence. And we understand that we are not alone anymore. So, um, you know, the, the movement between like third dimension to the fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness comes with more ease and grace. And also we are able to tap in, you know, higher realms, timelines and quantum realities where we are working with the laws of the universe to bring into fruition what we want. And I see this movement, you know, transition, how we can transition. Because I've worked for 15 years in corporations and I was into that matrix reality of like working hard and doing 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 but not being so you know like through my awakening and you know following the ascension process and the full embodiment i realized that we have to be first before to actually you know experience the reality that we want to enjoy so yes it is a beautiful transition i feel like the more people are awakening they are going into this, this space of of understanding that everything in their reality is a co-creation uh, and they are not the only one responsible so of, of how the co-creation is going it's just learning how to flow with the universe and I love also that in your uh, divine service on this planet you are bringing so much feminine energy and activating the abundance and the wealth within right and I saw so many males now actually you know, the, the the male archetypes and frequencies, they're actually learning how to tap into their intuition and learn how to sink, sink in with Gaia consciousness and the divine feminine frequency. So mm -hmm. it's a beautiful transformation. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for seeing me. And I feel like you're absolutely right. It's, it's the old paradigm of we have to work really hard and hustle and prove ourselves and it has to be challenging. And I feel like we are here to truly redefine success. We are truly here to show and embody what soulful success can really look like. So for you, what do you feel like really allowed you to create the, the success from soul, not just the work hard and hustle and get the money and spend it because we feel unworthy and deserving, right? 
the vicious cycle because I know you're very gifted, talented channeler and not all of us, like all of us could be and not all of us are, right? Not all of us are choosing it as our role. So I feel like maybe people come to your account and they're like, well, good for you. You can channel all this information. You can connect with, you know, the light galactic system what about me if I cannot channel, I cannot connect with the galactic forces? What can people do so they can break that limiting belief and create the abundance if all they can see it's just like, if I want to get this, I have to do this? Mm, I love this question. Thank you so much for asking. And, you know, it's so beautiful because in the third dimension, we are um, we are brainwashed and taught to actually um not stand out you know for actually to to off like to copy and paste each other it's like everyone has the same identity everyone looks the same everyone has to fit within some standards and some templates of, of operating everyone is wearing the same clothes is doing shoppings in the same places and so on and so forth while when people are awakening and you know they are following this process of ascension they actually find themselves of being different than others and they start to accept that they have their unique c- signature frequency that they are unique in their, uh, you know, what they are offering to the world in their abilities and gifts and talents and passions. And this is when the journey of self-actualization and self-realization actually starts, where they go within themselves and actually they are taking from inside out that authenticity and that uniqueness and that incredible way of being that is so, so like, they are so blessed in being just them, 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 themselves. And in the fifth dimension, you know, you don't have, because people are, are still waking up and they are kind of looking in the spiritual community to one another. It's like, oh, maybe I have to be a channeler or maybe I have to be a healer or maybe I have to be a Re- Reiki practitioner or maybe I have to be, you know, a past life, you know, hypnotherapist and so on. And, and you know, they don't know how to orientate within that world because we have been programmed in the third dimension to be something outside of ourselves. So within the fourth and fifth dimension, we start actually to not look around, you know, at others and start to actually go within and look within and, and see, you know, what is that incredible frequency that I was, I am, because as, as we are so unique in our expression and source energy, you know, co-created our embodiment to be unique. So there is no other Tetia, there is no other Livia in, in the world. It, it's We are unique. So when we are going inside our heart and souls, we are finding what that uniqueness is, you know, what that, those specific qualities and gifts are. And then we are offering that to the world. And that is powerful because that is real, authentic, embodied, and you are leading with, you know, the incredible treasures that you have within your heart consciousness, which is you. And nobody, there, you have no competition, you know, there is oh. no competition. You are, you are it, you know, wow. and this is what source like everyone to actually step in their, in their power and to contribute with their unique frequency at the co-creation of the new world and the new earth, because the, the, the co-creation of the new earth is not coming from having 1,000 hypnotherapists, 1,000 Reiki practitioners. It's, it's being you, fully mm-hmm. embodying yourself fully. And that's the beauty of awakening and ascension. Yeah. No wonder we align so deeply, Olivia, really. Because it's, of course, like my podcast, it's called Unapologetically Abundant because you got to first become unapologetically you so you can become abundant. And I feel like I, even though this podcast name, I, I had it for like almost four years now, right? Um, I feel like I fully understood and embodied it just the last year. We went with my husband to Puerto Rico. We were attending um, white, uh, all white, like a VIP party. And it was the first time in my life that I didn't feel the need to be like everybody else. You know, I don't need to mingle. I don't need to dance. I don't drink alcohol. I don't eat meat. You know, it was like a barbecue or something, you know, like made there. Um, and I was just walking and it was like sunset and it was like sunset and then getting dark and I could see still the sunset and the the moon. And I was walking on the beautiful white sand beach. And that was the first time that I truly embraced, like, there's nothing wrong with me for not wanting to like be like everybody else I came here to be different and that realization and not just like knowing in my mind right 
but the embodiment, it, it felt like everything connected, me being one with the ocean, with the sun, with the moon. And I really wish that everyone could experience it. The knowingness, like you came here to be you. You don't need to chase your purpose, right? Your purpose is to be you. So Livia, for those who are listening right now, and they're like, I don't really even know who I am, right? Because so many people are conditioned to who they should be or supposed to be and they're running this hamster wheel of just like doing things how can people reconnect to their true essence and who they really are so the process of reconnection is a process of deconstruction if i can say like that so the first the first uh, step would be for people to start actually understanding what they are not but in terms of for understanding what they are not, they have to actually, you know, connect with their essence. So there is a deconstruction of all the programming and all the structures and, you know, conditioning layers and everything that told them that they are this or that. Because, you know, this is this is the first world that, that they are breaking. And then is going a little bit deeper and sitting with yourself and, and understanding that there will be many masks that will need to fall off. There will be many walls that will need to actually crumble in order for that essence to come. And the shortcut to it is heart consciousness. So, you know, people in the third dimension are so used to work with their minds and to try to actually find so many trainings and healers and you know things that can trigger those walls and those marks to fall down and some people can be stuck in this process of actually dark night of the soul and healing for decades you know because they feel that they are not worthy of being themselves it's a it's a process of not being worthy of actually fully embodying your your essence because you know it's it's it takes a little bit of courage to say, I am who I am and I'm just going to stay within my essence no matter what. And people actually have to, you know, to acknowledge yeah, like that the, the, there is a need of self-worthiness and, and letting go of lack of self-worth to actually say, I am here for who I am. And this is my purpose and sole mission on this planet to just be and express myself to the world in my uniqueness. So the shortcut in finding your, that essence is through your heart consciousness is you know, going through the layers of the heart and becoming loving towards your, your, yourself and kind and caring and nurturing. It is a journey of self-love. And by doing that, you understand that you don't need to comply with society. You don't, you are not looking any, anymore for public validation. You are not looking for, you know, inclusiveness. You are not looking to mingle with others if that doesn't feel in alignment. And you start stand up for yourself you know and create those energetic boundaries and claim who you are unapologetically and this is when all the birthrights get activated you know the birthright to be abundant the birthright to to fully express your yourself into the world the birthright for growth and evolution and expansion that is happening effortlessly and all other birth the birthright for freedom and freedom of expression and just being yourself the birthright for co-creation you know, and, and then you, your frequency is aligning once you find, once you take this, this heart consciousness journey is aligning with all other people that are on the same journey of breaking through. It's like I'm breaking through my own limitations and I want to actually find my light tribe all around the world. So those, those people are, are, are becoming magnetically attracted to your frequency. And then you find people that are, that, are, that are on the same page and the same frequency reality and you can actually flow with them and, and actually evolve with them even more. So to answer to your question is the shortcut, you know, like letting go of all the mind structures and all these years and years and decades of trying to find out to be a seeker, right? Because people are actually taking even global journeys. They are traveling around the world in many sides to actually find themselves, you know, and trying to find out who they are. And nowadays, I feel like the acceleration of the planet is offering us the possibility to tune into who you are through the heart consciousness portal, which is a very powerful, you know, interdimensional portal of light where you don't need to have so many miles traveling around the world that you can start actually connecting to your essence and multidimensionality and letting that essence blossom like a lotus flower, you know, from your heart out. Um, and yeah, I feel this is, this is a beautiful first step. Mm -hmm. how beautiful i'm still coming to hawaii not that i need to search myself and i'm coming and uh, <laughs> i i love that i love that and you know i remember olivia when i was starting my journey years ago 
when people tell me everything you need, it's within you, I was kind of pissed because I'm like, what do you mean? I'm feeling empty. I'm feeling stuck. I'm not feeling, you know, like I am living into how I wanted to be living. So sometimes when we tell people like, it's your heart, like get into your heart, like how can they actually do that? Like, is it just like sitting in a meditation, connecting to your heart or I mean, is there any practice that we can leave them in with? So it just doesn't, you know, sound good and feel good, but they can actually like, okay, let me, you know, activate that portal of, you know, the heart consciousness. Yeah. So what everyone can do is, is becoming more aware, you know, of, of who they are and that level of awareness is, it can be cultivated through presence. So the more present everyone is with their day-to-day existence and they are not trying to think so much in the future or the past but stay present in this moment now the easier is for them to actually connect to their heart because many people are are so much in the in the mind and in the linear linearity of existence they are either in the future or in the past they are never in the present what many meditation uh, does is like bringing everyone into the present moment now it is a you know, a shortcut to actually stay present, but you can choose to stay present by not meditating, just taking a moment and say, in this moment now, I just want to connect to my body. I just want to feel my heart. I want to see how do I feel? Like people are not connect- connecting to their emotional body so much. They are only, you know, operating from their, from their mental body. So staying in the emotional body and asking yourself, how do you feel? And checking in with your heart. That is a moment of presence when you are connecting to the present now. And from that moment, you can actually go a little bit deeper. So meditation can be one tool, but just taking time and staying with yourself every day and checking in with yourself and then becoming aware. Through awareness, you are becoming more observant of your outside environment. You are not connected or, you know, going through this, stage or or moment or just uh, not doing things automatically because many people are just automatically responding to their reality and they are living in default realities they are not creators or or co-creators they are just reacting or responding but if you take a moment and you are not not responding or reacting but just staying with yourself and tuning in then you find this oasis of silence and peace and joy and we all have that inside of us when we transcend our mind and we are you know going deeper into our body and many embodiment practices like dance or you know qigong or tai chi or yoga is bringing you more into the body when you start feeling everything that is happening here and you are not living anymore in your mind or only in your head but you start to live through your body and this is a very powerful practice like meditation and any any movements of the body and you know becoming aware of how the energy flows becoming aware of your emotional body and your feelings and emotions and everything that is moving through you creates more awareness and is taking you a little bit out from being an active participant in your reality in becoming an observer and the next step becoming active and observant in the same time which, you know, the awareness is increasing and you are, you are more conscious and you are more devoted to and more curious about your reality. I hope mm. this answers. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. And, and you're absolutely right. Like so very often, like we are either, either in the past or we are in the future, but how about the present moment, right? Because those two are a complete illusion, you know? So it's, it's beautiful when we can really check in and how we are feeling. I, I love practicing Qigong. I'm certified, you know, level one for Qigong. So I, I just love that. And I know that even if I do like a couple minutes of Qigong in the morning, right upon raising up, it, it makes me feel completely different because you get to be fully present. Like it's, it's a moving meditation, right? So find a way how you can really reconnect to yourself to this present moment. And, uh, to wrap this beautiful, powerful, abundant activation today with you, my love, what are you feeling? And I don't want to even say do, like, what, like, how can we right here and right now 
tap even even more abundance like from where we are right now listening to this podcast how can we tap even into more abundance the first thing that we can do is actually disconnect of the collective realities and um look at outside circumstances in a different way than before. And I know that this is defining the co-creation of new timelines of abundance and new of and prosperity as well, because people are used to actually watch TV or look at their actual circumstances and create unconsciously realities from that point. And mostly all the realities that are created are based on lack and scarcity because the collective consciousness is not presenting so much abundance or prosperity. So what we need to do is actually disconnect to connect and the disconnection is of the lack and connect, connecting back to prosperity and abundance and the divine flow. And being more abundant means that you are connected to this flow state where everything is flowing through you and you are connected to source energy and you are allowing the co-creation to happen. So every manifestation or every co-creation has to start as a from a foundation of abundance. So by not looking at what is happening outside of you, but actually claiming your own timelines and realities and tapping into that energetic flow that allows you to co-create and stay into the highest frequency, that is what is important. So what people need to do is firstly disconnect and connect back to their heart consciousness, elevate their frequency through meditation and embodiment practices, also going in nature and connecting with the abundance that mother nature and Gaia consciousness is offering to us every day. And trying to see abundance in different ways, shape and forms because of abundance of wealth is not only money, is unconditional divine love that we are receiving is the abundance we get we receive from nature from sun from you know eating beautiful uh foods and nourishing our bodies abundance comes from self-love abundance comes for from the water we are drinking so connecting with different elements of abundance that we see and allowing to co-create with that frequency in a different way because when abundance is associated with money, there is a contraction in the physical body and people are feeling so contracted and re- resistant because of the, you know, the conditioning and the judgments that everyone has around the money frequency. So instead of connecting to money, you connect with the abundance and prosperity within and you are trying to, you know, relax within receiving that frequency and flowing way with it. So the disconnection come with a connection and also nurturing. Once you are in a space of raising your, your, your frequency, you start to nurture your connection with the abundance frequency and you start co-creating more and more with the universe. And from that moment, you can only level up. You can only become more abundant and more free and more nurtured. And there is more love flowing into your life. And it's only an ascension yeah, hierarchical ascension of your frequency so you can't spiral down um, and this takes a little bit of training a little bit of work a little bit of devotion excitement curiosity you know it's a it's a it's a challenge that you are accepting as being you know fun and you are not taking things so seriously at the beginning and then you are allowing that co-creation to happen effortlessly where you don't try to control and where you are becoming you know not only a manifester or someone that is generating realities, but someone that knows how to create and co-create resource energy. And I feel like this is the highest point when someone can actually arrive in the co-creation with the abundance frequency because money, it's all, all, always a byproduct of your co-creation with the abundance frequency. So it is being in your, in your divine service and in being into a, into a full opening to the universe you are rewarded with that money frequency that is coming as the end result. It's never the goal. Like money will never be the goal. It's just the end result that is coming because you are, you know, co-creating and you are embodying and you are an amazing human being that is doing incredible things on the planet. So I feel like there is a lot of flow that is happening right now. And, and, you know, there are timelines for collective consciousness and individual timelines that can be co-created. And people need to choose what they want to experience because the choice that they are making is creating their realities because the choice that they are actually making are has a foundational belief on how everything should be. 
So the more we are choosing and we are, you know, anchoring ourselves in our deepest heart desires and how we want to experience life, then the universe is only answering to our desires and our our needs and wants. And especially, you know, the programming from a subconscious mind, because everything is creating from, from our subconscious. So taking that journey of actually becoming more aware and becoming a deliberate co-creator and passionate about creating your, your, your reality. This is what is taking us in the highest timelines of abundance and prosperity. Wow. And you're such a beautiful embodiment of that. What I'm hearing is become that, and then you can attract that, right? And abundance, it's truly everywhere. Like nature, it's something that I so deeply love because it's never ending reminder of how there is a never ending, right? Like infinity of possibilities and it's so beautiful. So I know how much you are pouring into this world. And uh, for those who are really deeply resonating right now with you, where are some online places they can connect with you? Because no one can come to Hawaii, just me, I'm coming, but <laughs> I'm kidding. But online, where they can people connect with you online to get a little bit more of your essence and maybe learn with you? Thank you. So yes, you can guys find me on Instagram at Arcturians Channeling, on Facebook, Livia Devi, and my business Facebook page is Livia Devi Global, YouTube, Livia Devi, Devi Global, uh, my website, liviadevi.com. So all these places, if you just place my name on Google, you'll find many results there. And here, here we are, we can connect. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it so much. Thank you so much for not only you living and walking in your purpose, but really activating those around you to live even more wealthy and healthy and abundantly. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here with you all. And thank you, beautiful Petia, for inviting me. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for anchoring me into that timeline of finding <laughs> the land in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited when you call me and you're like, Petia, oh my gosh, look, this is what I see. Uh, this is what I saw on the meditation. So I know we are, it's so beautiful. That's why we get to really surround ourselves with people who see us, who adore us, who can uplift us so they can activate something in us and we can, you know, rise up together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>